Welcome everybody. This is uh, Jared Jacobs with another scriptural maturity um, Shabbat lesson that we're going to be doing today. Hope everybody had a fun week. It's definitely been an eventful week um, and off to a exciting start <laughs> to say the least for this year of 2021. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a discussion um, about things that are going on, obviously, what much of you know about um, and how there's a underlying agenda that we're going to go through and it's the same thing darkness has done in scripture so we'll look at um, things that uh, happened in scripture how darkness approached it and then we're going to parallel that with today so we'll be talking about a lot of things that are going on currently um and it's when i go into this um and like you guys know i i, I feel more comfortable when i don't have notes so i can just kind of you know flow with how this goes but um there the events that we're going to talk about obviously have to do with government. And so what I'm asking everybody to do is whatever political affiliations you have, whatever ideologies you have, just set that to the side. Because, and the reason why I'm asking this is as I throw up, you know, some of these, these articles and headlines that we're going to talk about and parallel that back to scripture, you know, it, it has a tendency to excite people, right? Either get them excited, get them mad or whatever. And it, there's an emotional response to it. And so for us to be able to um, kind of get through what we're going to talk about today and uncover, you know, what darkness is doing, because it's the same playbook that they use all the time. Um, we just have to be able to look and see and identify what they're doing. But just put the political affiliations aside, because that I, I don't that's not um, helpful for what we're doing. OK, so I want to start out with that. Um, it's very important um, for us as believers in these last days to be aware of Satan's devices, be aware of, you know, things that are happening around us so that we aren't caught off guard. And I, that's really been um, weighing on me the last few months. And that's why you kind of see some of the series and lessons we've been doing is been geared around. This is what's going on that everybody sees. Um, and these are the things that we need to be aware of so that we're not caught off guard. Right? You, you know, it talks about in the last days, um, the elect. You know, if the days aren't shortened, then even the elect may be fooled or they, they, they may be even taken out. And so we as the elect, we as God's remnant upon this earth, because we're saved, right? We have salvation. We have the spirit of the Lord within us. We've accepted Jesus Christ, Yeshua as Lord and Savior. And we have an understanding of God's commandments and how that ties into today's believer. Okay. That's the basis of this whole series of really of this channel that I'm doing. So what I want to do, all right, is I'm going to jump in and it'd be a lot of screen share today as normal. And I want to start out with a particular scripture. Okay. Because when we talk about government, it's a polarizing topic. People get excited, but we need to understand that as believers, we have a common ground and how this world is going to be run when Christ comes back to set up his kingdom for forever, right? For a thousand years and on after that. So I'm going to read this together with you. Most of you know this, but I think it's a good jumping off point for what we're going to talk about. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And it's going to be, that's going to come in handy. Um, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So the way of governing, the way of ruling, the way society is going to be um, govern, right? That's just what the word says, is going to rest upon our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Okay. And when he comes back to this earth, and we've covered this over the years, there's tons of scripture that talks about how is Christ's government going to be run? What are going to be his beliefs? What are going to be the rules? What are going to be the laws that his subjects, all right, those that are in his kingdom, those that are up on the earth at that time, what are they going to have to abide by? Right. And all the nations that you guys live in um, and we're spread out all over, as the Bible says we would be in the last days. There are different laws in each of the countries that are represented where, you know, people are on this earth and they're, they differ from one to the other. They have religious laws that differ from one place to the other. You've got financial laws. You've got all these things that are different. But yet when we see in scripture, when Christ comes back to this earth, he is going to be one Lord and one king over all of the earth. So then he has to have a common set of rules that everybody's going to abide by. And that's what this scripture is talking about. That government and all these governments that are upon the face of this earth are going to wash away and he is going to take that over. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
and the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So his government's not going to end. The way he rules, the things he believes, the things that we believe with him, is not going to end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we're going to use this as a jumping off ground that, yes, some of you have different po uh, political affiliations on one side or the other. Some of you may be, even be indifferent to all of that. But we have a common ground when we talk about the government of the Lord God of Israel and his holy son, Yeshua, coming to this earth and putting that into place. And there's not going to be an end. So since we have that common ground as believers, let's go and we're going to start talking about, and hopefully you guys can see that. All right, you can. Um, we're going to start talking about some current events. All right, so don't get excited. I already warned you about this. So recently in the last couple of weeks, this was passed. All right, the House has now implemented gender neutral language, meaning, and I'm going to show you what the what these words are, meaning, Moving forward, the government of the United States, and, I, and again, there are people that are represented in Africa and Europe that get on these calls. And the reason why this is important is because this is a testing ground. This is a dry run. This is a pilot program that's going to roll out all over the face of the earth. When we talk about the beast system, it's going to that beast system is made up of a ruling government over the whole earth, a ruling financial system over the whole earth and a ruling religion over the whole earth. That is that beast system that we've talked about, that we've talked about over the years and we're gonna to continue to talk about because we're seeing it come to pass in, our, in front of our faces. So when you talk about that ruling beast system, that government system, it has to control every facet of everyone's life, okay? Speech is what they're honing in on right now, all right? And just stay with me, don't, don't get political affiliations involved in this because as we go through this, it's going to open your eyes and you're going to see, man, darkness doesn't change. Okay. They don't change. They did this in scripture. So they have these gender neutral language rules. I don't have the video up because I've been trying to figure out some technical things to be able to play the video on the screen share. Give me a couple of weeks. I'll figure it out. But there was a prayer that they did after they had this rule. A lot of you already seen this. this is actually funny. You can look it up where they, at the end of the prayer with amen and a woman. All right. Yes, that sounds stupid. But there's a deeper uh, diabolical scheme that's underlined in all of this. All right, now let me show you the words. These are the words, I had to screenshot this. These are the words that are now banned in usage in the house, okay? In the, U in the U.S., but this is also going to be in other nations. It is in other nations to a certain degree, but it's going to roll out as the pilot program starts here. You cannot say father, man, son, daughter, brother, sister, you get all of that. Anything that has to do with family, anything that has to do with the family structure, anything that has to do with God's laws as it pertains to the family structure, okay? None of these can be used, all right? Now, it's going to take some time because the person that I showed on the last screenshot, you know, was caught saying some of these words, which goes to show you who gave them these rules to begin with, okay? And we're going to start talking about that. But these are all harmless to most of the world. We look at this, we laugh. That was the reaction most of us had to this was it's funny, it's stupid, but yet why are they doing it? Why are they doing it now? Okay, and we're gonna start looking at this. Now, the problem that I saw, all right, and I saw this and I laughed, but it was about two to three days ago, dots connected in my head. <clears throat> and what this what's happening is they are going after Christians and the Bible, <clears throat> because when you talk about the word and we just got through reading some of that, this historically, they used to pray in these government meetings. They used to read scripture in these government meetings. Now they are no longer able to do that because these words are without are throughout the Bible. I'm going to give you a couple examples. Start to think about why this is rolling out here and what that's going to do when you start to see this roll out in schools in the workplace in churches because that's what this b system is doing it roll it starts small darkness always introduces something that seems insignificant 
And then it grows over time as they push the envelope and they push it and they push it and people don't really know what's going on until it gets too big. And now we can't stop it. Okay. So let's read a couple of these scriptures that everybody knows. But I want you to think about this in the context of what they're saying is not allowed to be said anymore. And Jesus came and spake unto them and saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, that's illegal, and of the Son, can't say that either, and of the Holy Ghost, and at some point you won't be able to say that either. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Now, for those that are feeling right now that I'm taking this too far, stay with me on this, all right? I always set things up, and we go through things scripturally. Yes, it's going to the to, to most people, it's going to seem like I'm blowing this up. You look at this, and they're like, come on, man. These people, they go to church. They're Christians, they're Catholics, or whatever the case is. They're just doing this so that they can be more inclusive. I promise you, as we go through these scriptures, you will see what they're doing. Because this has not been, this is nothing new. Ain't nothing new on the sun. All right. We all know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but there's powers in the spirit realm that are of darkness that are pushing an agenda with the goal that we already know is going to happen with this B system where you can't say anything against the government. You can't preach Jesus Christ. They're going to try to kill you if you don't get in line with the one world religion that is also going to roll out. And we're going to talk about that in the upcoming weeks. OK, so stick with me. So that's one. You can't say that scripture. You can't preach salvation because they need to know that your heavenly father and his holy son yeshua jesus christ are the ones that we are to turn to and live for but since we can't say that we can't say father we can't say holy son you start to get a picture of who's really behind what's going on let's get another scripture and you guys know this this is usually prayed at a lot of uh graduations it used to be graduations um, you know, any type of public ceremonies, people are allowed to, you know, say the Lord's prayer. Um, my parents used to say back in their time in school, they used to pray in school before the day got started. I at least remember when I was a kid, maybe like second or third grade, I think they stopped after this. I remember giving up and saying the pledge of allegiance to the flag before every day of school. This is back in like the late eighties. I remember this. And you remember, I pledge allegiance to the flag. And it talks about one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, right? And they start to pull away from that. You start to take God out of speech. First, it was in schools, but you take God out of speech to try to shut down the things that God can do through his people. Okay, so let's read this. Nah, nah, where is it? And pray after the manner like this. Our Father, all right? This is obvious now that we're talking about it. But most Christians that are out here in the nations aren't thinking like this right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, how holy be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it goes through that. So you can't even read the Lord's Prayer as it pertains to the new speech rules that are being rolled out. Get off of the gender thing and start to think about the word that says, you know, uh, you go through Leviticus and it talks about, you know, you know, man can't lay with his with his sister or his his father's wife. And it goes through all those things where it talks about that. Can't even read that. This is coming against even the law of God. When you go into Daniel, we're not going to look at this today or that portion of Daniel. We are going to get to Daniel. And it talks about the Antichrist is going to be coming against those that are with the Holy Covenant. He's coming after the Holy Covenant. Why? Because there's laws and there's rules and the government of Yeshua is going to rest and use that covenant to govern the entire earth. You can see that at the end of Zechariah. I'm going to say that again. And I want you to start thinking about this. Some of you already know this stuff, but we get new people coming in all the time. And I'm trying to get you to jog the, the things that you've heard in church. Most churches today, most of my family, most of people that I went to high school and college with think I'm crazy. Because I'm telling people that we need to understand what's in God's law. And they say we don't need that anymore. But when you talk about the government, let me come back here. You talk about the government of Christ, the government of the Father of that created everything, the God of Israel. His government has to have rules. It has to have 
things that we are to follow. We understand that as humans upon this earth right now, that if you are in a state, a city, a county, a country, there are rules at every level that tells you what you can do and what you cannot do and what the penalties are if you do things that you're not supposed to do. Everybody understands that. But when we come into the realm of scripturality, into the realm of the church realm, we just want to do away with all the rules and all the laws. And we just kind of just flow with whatever it is that we think it is that the Holy Ghost is telling us to do. So what I'm saying is when you go through Daniel and we look at the end, when the beast system is completely rolled out, the Antichrist is not coming against the church. OK, in terms of mainstream church and religion, as we know it today, he's coming after the Holy Covenant specifically. And that's scriptural. We'll look at that probably in the next couple of weeks because I didn't plan on looking at that today. Now, now that I've set all this up, let's start looking at things that are going on. And then we're going to get into scripture to show you this ain't the first time they've tried this. Now, I want you to look at this. Over the last couple of weeks, you've seen me talk about the nation of China and how we're indebted to them as the United States. They hold a lot of our debt. And because of that, we've had to make certain concessions with them and allow them to buy up land and buy up uh, a lot of companies that are here, so on and so forth. We've covered that for a couple of weeks now. All right. This is what's going on. The influence that they have on us is going to start taking shape. So you see this uh, headline, communist warns, Christianity does not belong in China. This is what their government is saying now. There is a list that is uh, released um, every year, I think, and it shows the top nations where Christians are in the most danger. And you go like Pakistan, a lot of the Middle Eastern countries, um, India's on there, um, China definitely is on there, and it goes through uh, you know, it, uh, a lot of countries in Africa, and it lists all these different countries where you are actually in danger if you believe in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, okay? China's one of those. This is their stance as it pertains to Christianity. Now, when you go through, we're not gonna read this article, but there is something at the very end I wanted everybody to see, and it says the Chinese Communist Party is trying to rewrite the Bible. They wanna rewrite the Bible to sinicize the Christian doctrine. Now, me, I ain't know what sinicize meant. So I looked it up. I'll show it to you now. Sinicize or to sinicize means to make something Chinese in form or character to increase the Chinese influence on something, to convert Chinese characters or, you know, it wants to influence its culture, its way of thinking, not the Chinese culture. I'm talking about the government culture, the communist culture that they have. Total rule, total, total totalitarianism, you don't get to make choices. We tell you how many kids you get to have, so on and so forth. They want to impose that up on the Bible so that they can rewrite the Bible so that it matches up with the global government system that they want to roll out, which is the B system. That is where this is going. They're coming after speech. They're coming after certain words so that as this grows, they can completely change the word of God. They can take the word of God away from us, where it would be illegal to even have Bibles. I remember back in, what was it, World War II time with Hitler, they were burning Bibles. They were burning a lot of literature. So it's important to have the word in our heart. As we go through and you guys read your scriptures and we go through, we have these lessons together and a lot of ministry that's going on out there in the world. We're going to have to get that in our heart because it's going to be illegal to say certain things. It's going to be illegal to believe certain things. It's going to be illegal to have certain texts. You get caught with Bibles that has illegal wording in it. I don't know what the case is, what the penalty is going to be, but it ain't going to be good. So we got to have that here in our hearts. God's law has to be in our hearts. His word has to be in our hearts. I would even recommend to everybody for you to go and Google search the 613 laws. It's real simple. Copy and paste it, put it in a Word document, start to read through it. When I come up here and I do these lessons, and you'll hear me emphatically say things like, that's not scriptural, that's not in the law, there's no law that says this, there's no law that says I can't do that. I know that because I literally go through all 613 of them, I read them, and I see what's law and what's not. So when someone comes to me and says, well, on this day, you're supposed to do this, mm, no, that's not in the law. 
Real simple. When we have that here, as they roll these things out, you'll be able to identify real quick, this ain't of God. That's not of God. Let's see why. We're going to get into Daniel. I got some of this marked up because my um, profile that I use for Bible Gateway, I must have been highlighting this some time ago. <clears throat> so when you see this highlighted, it's not necessarily for this lesson. It just happens to be on my profile. But this is the game plan that darkness used back in Daniel's time, and we're seeing them do it exactly the same way today. Let's read together. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom. Let me make sure y'all can still see, because I know I'm blocking some of the scripture. Okay, I'm good. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three uh, presidents, all right, of whom Daniel was first, and the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. So he set up some presidents. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because he had an excellent spirit which was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Daniel has been given authority. Daniel has been given power. And Daniel is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. So you've got this man of God that's in a place of authority, and darkness doesn't like that because when people that are in authority, <clears throat> people that run a nation are tied to the Lord God, darkness is not going to be able to do a whole lot because their laws, their rulemaking, the things that they allow people to do, the things that they encourage people to do, the things that they pass legislation for people to be able to do or is funded, those things are going to be influenced by the spirit of God <clears throat> when leadership of a nation is tied to the things of God. Darkness does not want that. So they had to be able to take and remove the man that's proclaiming the Lord God of Israel. And we're going to see the method in which they did. Most of you already know this story. Some of you don't. So we're going to read it again. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none occasion nor fault for as much he was faithful Neither was there any error or fault found within him. He was a man of integrity. They couldn't, they went after him. And this is the key. They're coming after Daniel, not because he did something wrong, but because of what he believes and who he is in the kingdom of God. You can't have that run in the nation because darkness isn't going to be able to come in and do what it needs to do, which is still kill and destroy. Okay. So you think about the nations that you live in. And why is it that the laws and the things that are passed are always against the law of God? Because darkness is already infiltrated. That's where they want to go. Yes, you've got low-level devils that come around and they influence people and they get into people's lives. And, you know, we battle all against those things. But when you start talking about these top principalities, they go after the rulers. They go after the government leaders because that is where the game is played for the whole nation. Okay, uh, where are we at? Verse 5. And these men, and then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. We got to go after him by the law of God. The Antichrist, as I said, is coming against the Holy Covenant, coming against the law of the Lord God. That's what they're coming against in the end time. That's what they went after in Daniel's time. Okay. And oddly enough, Daniel's the one that wrote both. These are the presidents and the princes. Uh, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All these presidents of the kingdom and governors and princes and counselors and captains have consulted together. We've all gotten together. We got a great idea to establish a royal statute, a law. OK, to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So let's talk about this, right? I'm going to come back here as I talk about this because I want you to see this on screen. So in Daniel's time, darkness was using these men to come up with a way to remove God from a place of authority because God is obviously within and working within Daniel. So to do that, they had to come up with a rule that would encompass his religious beliefs okay they said if anybody ask a petition or ask a prayer of a man 
or a god other than the king for 30 days, then they're going to be basically they're going to get the death penalty. They didn't say it's against the law. We're going to create a rule that says if you pray unto the God of Israel, you're dead. Or if you believe in the God of Israel, you're dead. They didn't do that. Why? Because people see that as an overt attack. People see that as a blatant, outright attack. And when they recognize it, they're going to push back. Darkness is too slick for that. So they go around the back door and they say, we're going to create a law that's going to affect the people of God, but they won't understand until it's too late that the rule was passed to come against the people of God. That's exactly what you're seeing here. It's the same ploy. The same thing darkness did in Daniel's time to doing now. We're not going to tell you you can't read the Bible. We're not going to tell you it's against the law for you to publicly pray or publicly profess your belief in the scriptures or belief in the God of Israel. But we're going to start rolling out these laws that will bleed into some of the religious beliefs that the people of God have. Now you're start. hopefully you're starting to see how darkness works, how they start small and they start pushing the envelope. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign in writing that it be not changed. Pass that law. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. So likewise, as I opened up, you've got China, you've got Russia, you've got all these other nations that have uh, uh, Iran. All right, they're going to get involved in this pretty soon. We're going to see that um, with Ezekiel 38 and 39 we talked about a couple weeks ago. So you've got all these nations that want to take down the U.S. And we see that these men that are influencing the lawmakers of this nation, they're using a model of the Medes and the Persians. You guys remember when we talked about the, the, the statue of Daniel and how the Medes overtook the Babylonians? I think it was. I can't remember the order. But they were in that mix. All right. And the Persians were in that mix, the Medo-Persian Empire. So they're using that Medo-Persian Empire as a, a blueprint for them to make laws for this nation by influencing the king who is the lawmaker. Darkness does the same thing. They're doing it now. Use the model of China. Use the model of some of the other countries and get the influence the lawmakers of our nation or the nation I'm in right now. Ain't my nation is where I live right now for the time being. Get them to pass the laws so that we can get Daniel and his people. We could come after the God of Israel. Now, when Daniel knew that in writing was signed, he's a prophet, he knew. He went to his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. He didn't stop. And when we get through this lesson, when we get to the end, we got to have the same mentality. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop talking about uh, Heavenly Father and His Holy Son. I'm not going to stop saying Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm not going to stop saying that stuff. We can't. Because that if they're able to shut our mouth from being able to profess what we teach, what we believe, and what we're able to um, push darkness back with, right? Because the name of Jesus, there's power in that name, the name of Yeshua. You'll hear me say both because um, you'll we'll get people that, you know, are new. Actually, you know, you know, one of our friends came over and she was like, how do you say it yet? Yeah. You know, she, I said, there's nothing wrong with saying Jesus. There isn't. There's power in that name because the heart, the spirit is trying to reach out to and touch God's Holy Son. And if people's understanding of his name, even though there's no J in the Hebrew language, most of you know this, God knows where your heart is. All right. So we'll say Yeshua. You'll hear me say Jesus, just so people know that I'm not talking about some other God. All right. We ain't with that. So Daniel knew what had happened. He didn't care because there's power in prayer. There's power in speaking the name of Yeshua. There's power in keeping God's commandments. And if we stop doing that because of some law that's passed or some decree that's coming out that darkness has influenced the lawmakers, again, get off of the, the government affiliations. It doesn't matter right now because we are in the crosshairs just like Daniel was. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. They were looking for it. They went looking. They went to his house specifically after the law was passed to catch him so that they can take him down. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Thou hast not, uh, thou hast not signed a decree that every man shall ask a petition of any God or a man within 30 days, save thee, O king, uh, shall be cast into the den of lions, which is death penalty. 
And the king answered and said, this thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. All right? Because we're looking over there. This godless nation, this heathen nations that we're looking at, the Medo-Persian Empire, we're going to model ourselves after that because that makes all the sense in the world. And it doesn't. At least not to someone that's tied to the spirit of God, which altereth not. Then answered they said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, the children of God, regardeth not thee, O king, not the decree that thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. And you guys know the whole story. The king regretted what happened because he had made a law that could not change. They boxed him in. And I'm not even saying that there's some of the lawmakers in different countries that don't know the true intention behind some of this stuff that gets passed. But by the time it gets passed and they look around and be like, oh, man, I didn't know that that was the whole goal. It's too late. It's too late. But we as believers got to know what's going on. As soon as that law was passed, Daniel knew what was up. Just like we know what's up. OK, now this is the game plan. This is what darkness did with Daniel. We see it happening now. Now, as I start to go through the rest of these headlines, I'm hoping it's starting to connect some of the dots for you to say, forget my political beliefs, my political affiliations. Don't get emotionally charged with what we're seeing. OK, look at the behind the scenes ploy that darkness is using to build a system that is a, that is able to to not only tell you what you can't say, but then monitor you just like they did with Daniel. They went to his house and they were looking through the windows to see when he was going to pray because that's the extent that they could do it. If he would have closed his windows, they may not have saw. Where we are today through technology, through messaging apps, through some of the things we look at, they're going to be able to hear exactly what I'm saying or exactly what I'm saying with my wife and, and when we're talking about things or whatever, they can listen in, they can read your text messages, your emails. That B system is completely being rolled out. It's been worked on all these years and now it's here, okay? Now, again, don't get excited, but I want you to see how everybody is egging this on, but they don't understand what's coming behind it, okay? so. Right now, everybody knows the president of this nation for the next few days um, is under siege, right? He's being, um, for whatever, whatever he did, right? I'm not saying he did something or didn't do something, but he's being um, accused of things. And because he's being branded as an outlaw, because he's being branded as someone that should be um, taken out of modern society, let's look at the things that are happening with him because we know that in the times that are coming, it will be against the law to be a Christian. It will be against the law to keep the commandments of God. It's going to be against the law to talk about those things. And where they're going to be hunting us down, I think it's in Matthew 24, where it says they're going to hunt you down and they're going to kill you for my name's sake. What we're seeing is how they're going to do the hunting, how they're going to find everybody. And so what you're going to look at as you go through this, hopefully, is you're going to switch out the person with the believer in the end time. So social media bans, all right? Everybody knows, dude was cut off Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, everything you can think of. His voice is being cut off. He's not allowed to speak. He's not allowed to reach out to the masses or to you know whatever that is. And if I were to take him out and put us in, we aren't able to preach like we were before. We can use this medium in the interim to try to reach the hearts of people that are in different places around this world. And we are doing that, but the time will come where we're going to have to figure something out. Maybe it's a word of mouth thing. Maybe it's something that's, I don't know. We're going to have to figure something out. We got our own satellite or something. I don't know, but they're going to clamp down on the speech of the believer so that you can't get on social media and reach the masses. You can't get out there and say, Hey, those aliens that they're talking about that are our gods that have come down and they seeded humanity and the whole story of Adam and Eve was really them coming down and putting their DNA on the earth and creating mankind. And now they're coming back to give us an upgrade. That's who we need to be. Anybody that's talking about this Jesus and this God stuff, that's the old time. That's the religion that we use to mind control the masses, which is what dummies think today. They are our gods. 
Nothing new from Genesis 6. Nothing new. Just coming back around again. Okay? So, keep in mind that this is what's really happening. So, shutting him off social media. Shutting off his banks. Does not the scripture say you will not be able to buy or sell unless you tie in to the beast system by taking that mark that's in your right hand or in your forehead. You will not be able to do commerce. You will not be able to have a job, have a bank account, be able to pay bills or pay for food. And you're starting, and we know that is Christianity, but when we see this stuff going on, because it's politically motivated and it gets people excited one way or the other, everybody's egging it on. Like, yeah, he deserves that, or no, he doesn't deserve that. And I'm sitting here this week like, forget that. I see what's being set up. This is the same thing they did with Daniel, right? And we're trying to put this together so that we understand that it's coming for us. So that we can start thinking, I'm going to get to that to the end. So we can start thinking about what we need to do. So they shut off his banks. And this is a millionaire. If they're able to do this to, excuse me, this is a billionaire that was a president of a country. And if they're able to do that to him, just like they did to Daniel, right? Let me go back. Let me go back to this. Daniel was a president. Three, he was a president of who Daniel was the first. Daniel was a president of one of the top nations upon the earth at the, at the time. All right? He was always a president. And they're doing this likewise to a president of one of the top nations on the face of the earth. Doesn't matter. The beast system will come after anybody that doesn't tie in with it. So they shut off his banks. They shut off his social media. Now you're starting to look at the people. I get it. Some people, I, I'm trying, I, I know, you know, whatever. Down both the videos if if this makes you mad. I, that, that stuff doesn't even bother me anymore. I don't care. But what I'm trying to get people to see is to look past the facade that the media is trying to put in front of your eyes. Look past what they're telling you and start to understand what's being set up, right? So, yes, capital rides, horrible thing. You know, there's different theories of why it happened, who did it, whatever. I don't care. That's not what we're talking about right now. But this is bothersome to me. Cell phone data is being used to find the people that were in that location. Cell phone data. The location data that's in the apps that we have on our phone, the GPS tracking that's on our phone, and you start to talk about when Christ said they're going to hunt us down. And you're like, wow, are they really rolling this out? They are. And they're doing it in a way where everybody is agreeing with why it should happen. But once it's implemented, you can't take it back. And so when you talk about it's a, you know, I remember Prophet Deckard said years ago that the church was going to have to go underground, right? We were going to have to be meeting in basements and garages. You're going to have to be in, in secret meeting because it will be against the law. There will be rules passed where you can't gather. And you're starting to see some of that now. You can't gather as believers in a big crowd and begin to worship God and worship Yeshua to Christ. Ain't going to be able to do it. But then how are they going to be able to force it? Well, they got cell phone data. So if they can look at the metadata on your phone, and if your phone is pinging off the towers that are around the church that you're not supposed to be at, they can come find your behind and arrest you, which is exactly what they're doing here. Look past the facade, understand the system that's being set up. It's the B system. All right, came by ourselves. They know where you go. And then they tried to, <laughs> they tried, when they had Twitter shut down and Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff shut off and they couldn't use it, now he went to an alternative to try to do something that was less centralized, less controlled by the big tech corporations that are in the Satanism once you get into kind of what they believe. There's, there's a tweet, and I'm, I'm saying that because I just said that and somebody had a problem with it. There was a tweet from years back, like 10, 11 years ago. It was about like 2009. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, put out a tweet talking about something. It was something that had to do with Satanism or Satan worship. It was like some weird cryptic tweet. And everybody's like, why do you say that? If you don't believe me, go Google it. Jack Dorsey tweet Satanism, and you'll see what he said. These guys are tied into that. All right. The ones that rule over the banking system, the social media messaging that allows us to interact with each other online. These guys do not worship the God of Israel and his holy son. They don't. They've been infiltrated by the powers of darkness long ago. 
They took the deals or whatever he gave them, or riches or wealth, whatever he tried to give to Adam and Eve, life extension. And these guys are making decisions just like it was in Daniel's time to come after the people of the Holy Covenant, come after the people of the descendants of the tribes of Israel. Okay, so they went over to Parlor and they're like, yeah, we got this new app. It's different from there. They don't control it. But then it turns out that Amazon Web Services, and I was talking to my wife about this, um, Amazon, most of the internet that we use goes through servers that are owned by Amazon Web Services. Okay, most of it. Like when I, if the Amazon has an outage, and this has happened a couple times, um, you know, with me doing what I do at work, like we've had whole sites go down because Amazon Web Services had a glitch and it took down like half of the internet or the public internet that we see anyway because Amazon runs most of that. So they got they said, you know what? We're going to we're going to cancel the contract with the servers that that app runs on. Apple and Google took them off of their app stores, completely shutting them out of society. Take away the name. All right? This is cut and paste. Take out the name. Take the name out of your mind and put believer in its place. That's where this is about. That's why they're doing it this way. That's why God's allowing it to happen, to fulfill what he put in his word, okay? Now, let's get off of the person. Now we're starting to see some of this quietly roll out, get off of the reasons, get up, understand. There's always a reason that something needs to be passed. Some rule needs to be implemented. There's always reasons for it. It's not going to be unfounded. I understand people's stance one way or the other on these things. These are polarizing topics that make people mad. Probably getting down votes for this now. It doesn't matter to me. But understand why it's being implemented and what force is pushing the implementation. Now we got banks saying that if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't get to have an account. Now, it's a different reason than this of having bank accounts cut off, but it's the same result. Different reason, same result. Cutting out, and this is it, take out. Take out the person, refuse to wear a face mask. Take the person out. If I put this name in that place of this, then everybody will be like, oh yeah, makes sense, yeah. Take the name out and put believer in there because that's where this is going. All right. That's what China does. That's what's rolling out here. That's what's going to roll out all over the face of this earth. Won't be able to buy, won't be able to sell. You don't tie in with what they believe. And then there's another one. I'm not, and I talked about this too. They're using users location data to go and to find and to hunt us down. I remember Prophet used to always say they're going to be ransoms and bounties put on the heads of people that keep the covenant, then put on the heads of people that believe in Jesus Christ. Because he said they're going to come for my namesake. You believe in Jesus. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. You're seeing it. You are watching this. This is what blows my mind is we are literally watching this stuff happen. It's almost like a dream. You are literally looking in the word and you're seeing where he says it. And then you look up and there's like, wow, there come. You're telling me that I can't say father, mother, son, brother, so on and so forth. It is against rules to say this. How stupid is that? Not how stupid that is, how calculated and how dark it really is, because that's where it's coming from. Now, I'm going to end with a couple of scriptures. We go into the book of Acts and we are kind of still in that continuation of the book of Acts, right? Where, you know, God's going to have to do some miraculous things in order to push the message of what we're doing. Not just us, but people all over the face of the earth talking about receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And then understand there's stuff that you can and can't do in his kingdom. That government that's on his shoulders has rules. And you go through Zechariah and it starts to show even those that aren't even in, it, in, the, in the, the nation of Israel are in the families of Israel. You will be required to keep some of those holy feast days as it talks about. We've read that in the past. So there's a government and there's rules that are there. We got to push that out to the four corners of the earth, however that works. Doesn't have to be tens of thousands of people listening to the videos that we're doing. It could just be one person and then they tell one person and they tell one person. Doesn't matter. We're just pushing it out any way we can. It is no different from the time of the book of Acts. So I want to go into Acts 4 and show how 
they were trying to come after speech in his time as well, meaning Paul and the, the apostles times. All right, let's read this. Be it known unto you all and unto the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man here stand before you whole. So there was a miracle that was performed. This is the stone which was set, of, uh, uh, set at naught of the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, no, there is none other name under heaven given among men where must we be saved. Now, when they heard this and saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. These aren't dignitaries. These are just regular scrubs in their eyes. They marveled and they took knowledge of them and that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, and they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, all right, I'm talking about the council now. This is the governing body over the small area of Israel that they lived in. Rome is in power overall, but amongst this little, you know, city, amongst this province that they lived in, You've got the people at the temple, the council that are making the rules. So they think. And they're the ones that are having the same spirit, the same mindset as those men that were trying to come against Daniel. We know these are this is a holy man of God. We know that God is obviously working through him because these are miracles that we cannot gainsay. But yet it threatens our power. It threatens the authority that we have over the people and the money and the fame and the authority that comes with it. That's a threat to us. So we need to make it so that they can't say anything and they can't preach by this name, which obviously has the power, just like they did with Daniel. Okay, making stupid rules so that they can catch the people of God. Uh, where am I at? Mm, verse 16, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle have been done by them is manifest to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. They knew God was in it. <laughs> that didn't stop them. But it spread, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no man in this name. They made a rule, they made a decree that you cannot say the name of Jesus anymore, that it spread no further among the people. Then they said, we can't deny that God did this, but we can't have this spreading. So they came against the speech of the believer. This is the end game. This is the goal. This is what darkness has always tried to do. And they called them and commanded them not to speak nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge. Meaning, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And if you think that's wrong, let that be wrong to you. But I'm going to keep doing it. For we cannot speak but the things that we have seen and heard. So when they have further threatened him, they let them go, finding nothing how they may punish them, because the rule, the law, of Rome was not put in place yet to kill them, all right? There was no rule there to kill them. They had to come against Christ and say, hey man, this dude's trying to, he's trying to take over the government. He's out here causing problems, all right? Well, there's no explicit law, but we gotta get this dude up out of here. Same spirit, same powers of darkness. Because of the people, for all the men glorify God, which was done. So coming after the speech, and I'll end with this, all right? This is another example of this in the book of Acts. And we're going to see this again, that even though they told them not to speak that name, even though they made a rule and regulation how you shouldn't speak that name, and they threatened them not to do it, they still did it because they knew that it was a calling that God put in their heart and the anointing that God put in their life to do it. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught, meaning it's going to fizzle out. It's not going to work. If God's not behind it, it'll fall apart anyway. But if it be a God, you cannot overthrow it. Least happily ye be found even to fight against God. 
you're starting to see some of this come to pass where they're going to be fighting against God. You come against God's word, it's a curse in the word for anyone that tries to add to or take away from. And with these boys out here trying to come in here and rewrite the Bible and take things out of it, that's a curse upon them and upon that nation. And they will come to pass, as it tells us in the book. All right. All those nations that came against Israel, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we covered that a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it said, for if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. At least you be handed to fight. Okay, read that. And to him, they agreed that they called the apostles and beat them. And they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And it goes on and it goes on. And they continue to do it because they sound found themselves worthy to be persecuted for the name of Christ. So those are the things that I wanted to cover today. It's important that, again, when we watch the news and we watch the messages that are being pushed at us, understand that, yes, there's an emotional response to that. But in the back of our heads as the elect, we got to know what is darkness doing in this? How is this affecting the life of the believer upon this earth? How does that, knowing that they're doing that, now we need to start thinking about what do we need to prepare? How do we need to prepare? How, what is my mindset? Because my, if you ain't noticed in the last two to three months, we've been pushing a lot of information at you to get you to think and to research and to plan for you and your family. Because yes, we're in the time of the Lord God is going to watch over those that keep his holy covenant and faith in, in Jesus Christ. That's the, the spiritual aspect of it. But there's a physical, uh, physical requirement that we have where we in the natural need to do things. We may have to be, uh, you know, make geographical decisions of where we live, food decisions of what we buy and store up, um, you know, things that we need to, you know, get involved with or not get involved with. I'm just using that as a vague example. I'm not trying to say anything there. But as I pray and I close, let the spirit of God work within you. Work within your spirit, man, so that you can have your eyes open and he can direct and help you go in the direction that you should go. OK, um, you know, one, you know, my wife was talking to one of, one of her friends this week and she may even watch this. And, you know, she was trying to take on fasting for um, the first time. And so for me, you know, we talked about don't speak in the name of Jesus and things like that. So when people come up and they ask certain questions about, hey, you know, get filled with the Holy Ghost or fasting or whatever um a lot of times i cheat where i just say hey you know here's a video i did go ahead and watch that and that'll be able to minister to that person all right and you guys can do the same you know videos for whatever ministries you guys support you can just send people links and be like hey check this out when they ask you a question unsolicited and didn't really work don't send somebody an unsolicited video they're gonna watch that but when somebody asks you a question yeah you send it to them and it begins to you know open their eyes because as they want to seek God in a new way, when they want to have the, uh, the spirit of God begin to work on their heart and their mind so that they can see something that they weren't able to see before because they were head set on going in this direction. I don't want to do nothing else. This is what I want. This is the way I want to go in my life. But we never really consider that maybe God wants you to go in a different direction. Each of us have a calling an anointing and a purpose that was placed on our spirit men before we were put in these fleshly bodies and your peace and your satisfaction and your joy in life is going to be tied to whatever that path is that God set for you. And when we don't find that destiny and we don't do the things that God's called us to do, you're not going to be happy. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. You're not doing and fulfilling God's purpose. Your spirit man is going to be convicting you and you're not going to be able to find that happiness. That's what goes on in Hollywood. You got people that go out there wanting the fame, wanting the money, wanting all the things that come with it. And they sell their souls and they do things that they never thought that they would do. You've got some, not dropping names, but you've got um, world recognized, renowned singers that grew up in church. Dads are actually a pastor, grew up singing in church. And went out there and did some unspeakable things um, to the side of darkness to basically pledge her allegiance. Got all the money, got all the fame, and have night terrors all the time. 
can't sleep by yourself because the demons come in and mess with you because you've opened yourself up. Your peace and your um, joy in life is going to be tied to the calling that God has placed. And until we're willing to be able to open up and say, God, whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing right now that I may not know, open my mind, open my eyes. Let the Spirit of God lead me in the new direction so that I'm in the place that I'm supposed to be because that's where the provision's going to be. That's where the protection is going to be. And that's where we're going to have to be so that when darkness comes at us with the things that they're setting up for the believers, that God can lead us through that wilderness. God can lead us through that Red Sea moment with provision, with the protection in a miraculous way. That's where we're going to have to be. Be at the right place at the right time so that God can do the rest. But we've got to do our part. We talked about this last week. We have to give God something to work with. Yes, that pertains to you know money, but that's not all that pertains to. Give God something to work with. Show him that you're willing to make a change. If he wanted you to go over here in this direction, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to conform your desires to what his will is for your life? That's the question that each of us have to answer for ourselves. Okay, let's go ahead and pray and we'll close for the day. Most high God, God of Israel, God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come to you, Father, in the name of your holy son, Yeshua. Forgive us of our sins. We're not afraid to say your name. We're not afraid to preach your name. Because as the scripture said, we can only speak what we've seen and what we've heard and what we've lived. Father, I open up my mind and my spirit, and I pray that each person that's listening to this prayer will do the same that your spirit, the Holy Ghost, will come in and begin to work on us. Help us to see the things that we need to change. Help us to identify new directions that you may be calling us into. I pray, Father, that if, as we yield ourselves to your will, that you will be able to guide our families. You will be able to guide ourselves into the areas that we need to be. If there's people that need to come in our pathway, Lord, for us to minister to them or them to minister to us, Lord God, let the angels go forth and begin to make those connections. Begin to open up those directions. Begin to do the things, Lord God, that we may not have been able to allow you to do because we've had our minds seared, we've had our minds shut off, and we've had directions that we wanted to go and never considered that you, Father, have the path for happiness. You, Father, have the path for our salvation in the next world and also in this world. Satan, we want to bind you from this, that you be not able to come against the directions and be not able to come against the ideas and be not able to come against the things that God's speaking into the hearts of the people even now. And we loose that anointing to meet the need of every person that listens to my voice. If it be a mental need, if it be a health need, if it be something, Lord God, of confusion that someone may have, Break those yokes, Lord God, in the name of Yeshua, and let your anointing go forth and meet the need wherever they are and wherever they may be in their walk with you. We thank you for it, Lord God, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Guys, have a great week. I pray that um, no matter what's going on with the news, no matter what's going on with the governments and the places that you live, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your hands busy with studying his word and preparing for the days to come. We'll come back with a lesson next week. Shalom.